I really like this little old um, record store on Pitwater Road. It's near my studio, and it's got um, it's all it's owned by this old German guy. I actually nearly lived there. I nearly was like, bro, just rent me out that room. I'll fucking make beats all day. <laughs> I used to go in there and just hang out with him and talk a lot. <laughs> I'm always looking for record stores. Like any time I see one, I, I go into it. Um, I go into them and, and have a suss through. I love like trying to go to secondhand shops and just looking through the vinyl section because you find like old 70s records and 50s records that um, you don't see like when you buy new records in other shops. It's amazing man, 100%. Like I feel like there's more soul in vinyl, there's more soul in analog, like, and I feel like um, humans like, our, our need for perfection and our want to be perfect and stuff is actually bringing us further away from what it is to have soul within music, like. There's something tangible about physicality, there's something tangible about touching the music, about that exchange of your physical money for a physical yeah. product. Um, that making that exchange is something that's going to tie you to the band um, on, a, I think, an extra level rather than just pressing buy now or pressing follow or yeah. pressing save on you know, Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever. It, it has a different sound, like a, a, it has arca, like artifacts within the sound. It has like a wrong sound. It's not a clinical sound. All those little imperfections, all those little pops and cracks and stuff that you hear, like those things, like that, that is what makes art beautiful, like is that it's not perfect. So like in this day and age where everything's released digitally and everything's completely quantized to the shithouse and compressed down and sounds perfect, it actually doesn't sound perfect to me anymore, you know what I mean? The more record stores there are, the more people get excited about it and, you know, make it its... It used to be a big deal when there was like 10 independent record shops in the city. People actually used to come in on Saturdays and spend the whole day going around to the record shops and it's really sad that that doesn't happen anymore. A lot of my favourite producers and DJs, you know, like the more house genre and stuff like this, they only release on fun. And so it's like, I know that this artist's music is going to be fucking good because they're only releasing two songs, <laughs> an A side and a B side, and it's like, you know, it costs 30 bucks <laughs> or whatever. Like, it's not what it costs, but it, it, it probably costs them 20 bucks, you know what I mean? Which is even worse, you know what I mean? Like, imagine investing in it. Did vinyl culture never like change or shift because a lot of the guys always want it like that, you know what I mean? It's always got to be, and that kicks just sounds a little bit warmer, eh? Like when it's on vinyl. <laughs> I like the experience of a record personally. I don't have Spotify, so I don't know what it's like. I don't buy on iTunes. I think just going home, having a wine or a water or whatever, and playing the record, picking it, you go to the shelf. Theoretically, you can't really skip it. And that's the problem I find with streaming. Oh, I'm bored now, next. I'm bored now, next. At the end of the day, you just basically want your music to get out there one way or another. And I think like online and Spotify and Apple Music has made it so like, accessible for every band to just record something and put it out. The main thing that bothers me about it is that it's given people who've grown up with it the idea that this stuff should all be for free when they don't realise how much time and effort and money goes into making records or make it, just making music, whether you're putting it out as a, you know, as a record or a CD or whatever. I think it, I see like the other side where People are like, well, this is shit. I just spent a year recording this and I made no money off it and everyone's listening for free. At the same time, without that digital streaming service, you might not have ever had the opportunity to put it out. Mm. And there's so many bands like us. When we first put out music, for 30 bucks, we can upload our song to Spotify and people can listen to it in China. Like, it's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. The whole streaming thing has a positive 
influence on the community because if you're good, like you're gonna get noticed, you know what I mean? Like Spotify has things like playlists and shit, so you could be a no one and you could put out an amazing song and they could put it in the right playlist and overnight you have 140,000 plays, you know? And like, where else in the history of humanity has that ever happened before? You know what I mean? It's insanely important too because like it gives revenue to artists. Like I make money now off my Spotify. Like I never thought that would happen. I think artists are getting chipped a bit. Like you don't get much in return. Like, yeah. The percentage per like play is absolutely. But the trade-off is anyone in the world can listen to your music and you can put music out anywhere and anytime. It puts the power back to the artist in my opinion. And I think like for return for the artists like these days, it's not like, and there's so many bands that, you know, is do it yourself, like DIY. Um, yeah. you, you make your own merch, you, you source out like your own people to record your album, or you record your album yourself, or, you know, you, you book your own gigs and everything. So I think like that, even though it seems like more of a grind, I think that people, like bands are loving it because you're just so like hands on with everything. Plus, like, as an artist, man, like, I know a lot of artists that make most of their money from merchandising. Like, they don't make most of their money from shows. They don't make most of their money from giving their music away for free online. Like, they make it from selling t-shirts at a gig. Like, I remember with Lyle Maloney, like, I'd be sitting at the desk selling t-shirts for him. And, like, if we didn't sell enough t-shirts, like, we don't eat. You know what I mean? Like, that's the whole fucking thing. The fucking shirts are a part of you. And, and yeah, you might not think that, and a lot of artists wouldn't think that, but I, I feel like that because I felt like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I think it's more important, and it's special. If you make it special, it's special. I know for a, a fact, like, I mean, I have a Lime Cordial sticker on my fridge right now. So, like, for them, it's not a big deal. It costs like five cents to make a sticker, but you give that to a fan. They put it on their fridge or they put it on their wall in their room. It's something that they look at every day. They're constantly reminded of you, who you are, your music, all of that stuff. So like it's a gift from you to them because like it's an actual physical thing that you're giving them. But it's a gift from them to you because then they end up looking at what you've given them and what they've received from you and they think of you. You know what I mean? Like it's going to increase record sales. It's going to increase like, uh, like audience, uh, what do you call it? Audience participation, I guess you'd call it. Very cultural, you know what I mean? And as you say, walking down the street wearing a band t shirt, and it might be someone that most people have never heard of, or it might be a shirt obscure in a way that, like, no one even knows it's a band unless you know that fucking band. And that brings you together with people, you know what I mean? So, in, and often in random circumstances. I just love probably overall the feeling that all aspects of music give, like, you and to other people, and like, sounds cheesy but like music like you can connect with and Jimmy said like bands with energy and, and artists just um, seeing someone live and that feeling it gives you or like listening to an album and that feeling it gives you I just think the feeling that music gives off is just is something like that semi feels magical because you can't really explain it. It's all fucking about music. Depends. Just whatever they want to listen to. <laughs> you know, whatever way they want to listen to it. Either or, just fucking listen to music, do it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I've got a funny high ground story about a vinyl. <laughs> we were up at my uncle's house in Byron Bay. <laughs> and, um, how yeah. do I say this? We were very happy. And yeah. um, we put on this vinyl, right? And we didn't realize, what is it, like 30, the two different speeds? Yeah, 45 like, and 33. Yeah, something. So it was actually a 45 album, so it was in fast, but we put it on, it was a Frankie Goes to Hollywood on 33, thinking it was a normal speed. We were so high, and we're listening to this music, <laughs> and it was a 70s album, and it was like slow house music, like bum 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 bum, dark house, like, we Probably just, we minutes. just discovered the original house music, <laughs> oh my god, and we're all sitting there, this song went for like 25 minutes, and we're like, oh my god, we're gonna die, <laughs> and then someone goes, it's on the wrong speed, and it was actually like, <laughs> And that's my story. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That was the best moment in my life. Yeah.